Brand new Ren. He gave us a little bit of a break, but he's back at it again with some more music. They ha- He has a Sick Boy album that's available for pre-order still, so make sure you pre-order that. If you haven't, it'd be cool to see him hit the top of those charts as much as possible. So without further ado, my name is Alan. I'm a sound engineer and a musician. Let's go ahead and check this out. I didn't even realize he played piano. I don't know if this is him playing piano. So I got the actual credits here for who's playing what. So the pianist is Charlie Wood Byrne. Excellent piano playing, man. Uh, Viola is Jordan. Uh, Violin is Dan Oates. Cello one is Alexandra Marshall. And cello two is Marion Porter Lance. So that is who is actually playing all the instruments in this song and they did a fantastic job you know but this is beautiful playing very well done just flawless <clears throat> such a beautiful sound so cool how it spin and you saw the reflection of the piano it kind of like turned into it divided the picture I keep feeling we're gonna get like a jump scare or something. I don't know. Now, something that's really cool about his voice right here is that we have like this almost vintage sound that's being EQ'd on his voice. And there is some EQs that can run your voice through to give it that vintage sound. So I'm curious if he's doing that. I feel like he is. It adds that little special coloration with his voice already. Definitely sounds like something like that. I love it. It's so fitting for this. Let me tell you a story about a boy named Jimmy. One years old and his first words were My, my, gimme Two years old he was walking Three years old walking quickly Four years old he was running round the pavements of his city Five years old and his daddy told him Listen here son, you gotta learn to be a man A man he works for what he wants Six years old and he's reading writing Top of the bunch And when he's seven his progression made him student number one Eight years old and he's praised for unusual grades Nine, his parents paid for private school to nurture the flame Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen He ascends and ascends His daddy tells him son Money is the means to all ends Fourteen, solving complex mathematic equations At fifteen, IQ a hundred and fifty Still elevating six I really love this. This is so cool how they're just making the tempo go faster and faster as the song progresses. He's typing on the keyboard. You hear more on the keys going dun, 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 as it's progressing. And then the way that he's keeping up with this steady incline of beats per minute is very impressive and very hard to stay on time also. He develops complex software code that detects weaknesses in cybersecurity protocols. 
17 and he sells his vision Keeping the share Not yet an adult but he's practically a millionaire 18 and his daddy tells him Now you're a man This world don't give a damn about you So take all that you can 19 he turns a profit Stocks and shares invest in product 20 double down deposits 21 his income rockets 22 he learns the truth is just an obstacle to wealth If you manipulate the data then the lie will sell itself 23 a life of luxury crystal and cocaine 24 he makes the Forbes list they're applauding his name 25 and his daddy tells him listen here son the piano sounds good so good right now i love the fullness of it with his voice i like how it's changing as he's going throughout the story he's going up in age just getting more maniacal and stuff with the with the piano sounds i feel like i hear a bass in there it like with the piano off to the left while you're sitting in that palace, that don't mean that you won 26, a business shift, he switches business to arms He's 27, dealing nuclear and shells in Iran 28, inside the Senate, money bought him a seat He's 29, a role of counsel in the president's suite Now he's 30, his daddy says you're losing the race You're just a servant to the king No, that's just like the bass notes of the piano But the way that they're mixed is really fucking cool I don't think I've heard anything like that. I wonder how he's doing that. I'm kind of baffled. I didn't separate the tracks on this one because I knew it was going to be one of those straightforward songs, but now I'm wishing I did so I can hear exactly what that is. But it sounds so different, so unique. Even the piano production is done really well, and it's fitting the story of the song. Even in second place, 31 a big maneuver for his daddy's approval. Moving imports over borders from the exports out of Cuba. 32 moving grams, growing kilos to tons. He's 33. Yeah, it's just the low end of it is just the low end of the piano. He's just EQ'd it differently and it sounds really cool. I like it. In warehouses with powder and guns, 34 turf war with nobody to stop it. Blind eye from the popo inside of his pocket. <sighs> 35. He gets the call. I'm sorry, son. But it's your father. Had a heart attack. I'm sorry, he's gone. 36, uh. getting pissed off, abusing his product 37, eyes glazed, disposition demonic 38, with a prostitute, a moment of passion Heating up a silver spoon and then chasing the dragon 39, getting reckless and hungry See, for me, what I'm getting out of this is just like making your sole purpose and your sole goal to be money-oriented is not the way to go about things And... I definitely went down that route at one point in my life. So I was working for this company called Carl's Jr. And I had started off as an employee and I was really good at it. And I moved up immediately. I just had gotten out of the military. Uh, my family at the time was really nervous about what I was going to do after the military because I was in love with playing music. I really loved playing music, but I was also good at this other thing, which was business. Um, it was just something that I just naturally understood and got and... I liked the fact that there was something different every single day. That was my justification at the time. So I went into a fast food place and I worked and I made it to a district manager, which was the highest level that I could be at, at this company. I couldn't go up any higher and I'm grateful that I couldn't. And I'm so happy that the VPO at the time kind of stopped me from getting any further. And I did this at a relatively young age. By the time I was like 23, I was a DM. I was the youngest DM uh, for the company. And my goal was just to make as much money as I can. And I was, I was always like thirsting for like, just make more, make more. And, and I got, I got promoted so fast that I was like, always like, what's next. But what happened afterwards, I started getting depressed, started getting down. The other DM that I worked with, you know, we started doing drugs, um, drinking. This is when the, my drinking shit first started and it was, <sighs> Looking back at it now, it's just crazy how it went down. And I got severely addicted eventually, obviously. And I did shrooms one day. <laughs> Do not advocate doing this. And it kind of snapped me out of my alcoholism and drug use at that time. And I was back to kind of normal. Then I did shrooms again. And I went into work. <laughs> 
<laughs> while I was doing this. And I remember being stuck on the back line as a district manager, mind you. I'm at, on the back line and I'm sitting there making burgers. We had this line out the door and the owner, uh, Carl, yes, the Carl, this was the grandson and the son that took over the legacy of the company and they had their own franchise. They walked in the door and I was sitting there struggling, uh, trying to get these orders out. I remember the whole time I'm like, man, I'm just part of the problem. I'm serving <laughs> garbage shit food to people. I'll, at one point I felt like <laughs> while I was there, I was like, man, I'm the reason why people are dying slowly or like, or not dying slowly, but just dying faster. And because I'm, I'm feeding them this shit and I'm making money off of feeding them shit, even though I wasn't the person like so responsible for it, but I was the one pushing this brand and I all of a sudden just start breaking down uh, while I was working. And, but I'm getting a little off topic, but on that day specifically, they came in and they completely left me hanging. There was a bunch of uh, customers there and they left me hanging and just walked away. And at that moment, I was just like, I, I quit. I, I just walked out. I walked out. I was in the middle of cooking. I just walked out. I mean, like I literally lost my mind and I just had this like awakening at that point of like, what the fuck am I doing? I've always wanted to do music my entire life. Why the hell? why the hell am I doing this? Like, what am I doing? This wasn't the goal. Like, where did I get lost? And a lot of it had to do with the drugs and alcohol. And I left. And unfortunately, it's been a struggle ever since then. You know, I'm still trying to do music, trying to do production. I had a studio at one point and ended up losing that studio. But I just keep going along with it. Luckily, um, I've sobered up this past, you know, year now and um moving forward and hopefully i can get back to you know something where i can and hopefully now i can get back to like the real thing that i wanted to do which was create music and you know share music with people and do stuff like this what we're doing and it, it was a it was a crazy transition because i went from like wanting all that money and stuff to i sold my house i sold everything i owned and then I moved into this trailer that I am in now. Yes, this is a green screen, if you guys didn't know. Um, so, yeah, all this green screen. Let's show you guys. But, and that's what I used so I could show the video. And I, I did that because, obviously, <laughs> it's a trashed-up trailer that I'm living out of. Um, but it's one of those things that I'm like, I'm just looking forward to playing music every day and I'm much happier now that I'm sober and now that I can just play music and talk about music and it's totally possible to make a great production out of something like this. This is, this is where I wrote our song Phoenix, which was our last single. Um, and then I think it came out really good and well produced even, even without a studio and all that stuff. So I do everything out of here. But I guess now I should put that green screen back up because you guys won't be able to see the screen now. <laughs> but I guess the point is I'm much happier just being on the grind and working day to day to make enough money to do what I got to do to get through. I'm much happier doing that than working like 80 hour weeks at a fast food joint. What was my whole point? I know it was a long rant, I apologize. Let's get back to the video. For power, daddy's words are still driving him to kill and devour. Makes a move against the cartel, but the strategy's flawed. They retaliate and leave him in the hospital ward. A bullet buried in his vertebra, and one in his leg. The doctor sighs and says, I don't think you'll be walking again. Fuck. Yeah, just like that, it could happen, you know? You wasted your, all your time chasing, chasing that dollar. <laughs> it's so crazy relatable. I'm just like, dude, I almost lost my fucking arm like arm i still have nerve damage all through my arm because of my accident you know that was my tipping point 
but I could have ended up like in this story where I'm not walking anymore, you know, or be bitter or <laughs> fuck knows who, who knows what, you know, it's just insane. Insane. Sanely relatable. I should say. Let me tell you a story about a boy named Jimmy He was 40 and he cursed the words My, my, gimme 41 he wasn't walking 42 not walking quickly 43 never running round the pavements of his city 44 inside a palace with a mountain of gold <coughs> But those riches turn to rubble when perspective evolves Weighing heavy on his conscience is the value of gold Lamborghini for a life, trading money for souls Jimmy followed the code inside the land of the free Put your hand inside the cookie jar, take more than you need And his example is exaggerated versions of me And it's a version of him and it's a version of she And it's a version of you There's no escaping the blame The way we live is parasitic Fuck the money and fame Cut the music This isn't entertainment This is real life The way we live is lunacy Community, it declines Hyperpolarized, always fighting Then we divide Truth is less important than the money that we designed. Money's an invention. Politics yeah. from our invention. They all come from people's ideas. Did I mention? Borders an invention. Law and order fuel the tension. It leads to people killing each other. My solution? Everything is subject to change. We could build utopias if individuals were taught to use their brains. But if we teach kids in schools to always be sheep and put themselves before the herd if there's more money for me, then there's no future I see where the humans survive. We're parasites inside a petri dish with cannibal minds. Mold will grow upon the surface and consumes till it dies. And our fate could be the same without this story to the wise. <coughs> 45. Jimmy comes home out of the rain, soaking wet upon a wheelchair, drinking again. He is everything he wants, he is fortune and fame He's a fortunate fool with an unfortunate fate With a 45 caliber aimed at his brain 45 a fitting number cause his age is the same Here's the words of his father It's such a damn shame Then he presses on the trigger of a money game I feel like every one of these kind of Ren songs is like a therapy session. I hope you all could understand what I was saying. Hopefully I wasn't mumbling too much. <laughs> just like every Ren song just like leaves you with a lot to think about. And something that really resonated right now too at the end, it's like for me individually, I got to be careful too, even with the music thing, you know, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, you know, um, I like to entertain people. That's why I like doing music. I love, um, I just like it. I like making people feel good or, um, I like helping people, uh, with music. So that's what I hope to do, but I can see how that could be easily lost through fame or money or something like that. You know, that's why I'm just very happy to just make enough to make a living because I think that's perfect. That's all I got to say. I have more Ren videos right here. If you guys want to check them out. See you guys in the next one.